This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on October the 24th, 2016. In this edition, James will answer your questions. Maybe. Hello. Welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. My grandpa's not going to be here for this one, so it's going to be a Q&A, or as I like to call it, a Q&MA, which is question and maybe answers. Um, so I don't have a set thing, so we're just going to do uh, questions, but I am going to do Brenda's questions first, or question first, because um, she asked us last uh, last week, and we didn't really... <laughs> Uh, we couldn't. We didn't have time to do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll start talking at one point here. Um, so she wanted to know how to get pictures onto a DVD or in this case a CD-ROM. And what you would do on Windows 10, anyways, is you would put the CD into the tray, put it in and wait till it sees everything there we go so now if I open up this PC and I go to DVD drive or the D drive it might be something different if you have multiple hard drives it could be D E um, F but once you open it, you'll ask to burn a disk and you can use it like a USB drive or a CD and DVD player. Now, um, the difference is um, with, with a USB drive, you can um, take it out, put it in and put more files into it. It's what's called an open session. Um, that just means you can add things and take things off um, for the long, a long time. The, the bottom option is uh, essentially a closed session. Once you take it out, it's done. You can't add more to it. You can't delete it if it's not a rewritable. Um, for there, there's two ways to do, um, to put pictures and other things onto a disk. Um, the first way is through Windows itself. So I know I have a closed session going on. So I have all the the DVD drive here and his pictures. We'll do these. And if you guys were here for one of our first classes, I talked about uh, you can take a window and snap it to one side of the screen and you can snap the other one to the other side of the screen. So what you can do is to drag it and drop it as so by left clicking and holding a picture you want and bringing it over. Now if you have that message pop up, you have files waiting to be burned to a disk. Um, that means you have files to burn into a disk. Um, sometimes you'll forget about it and it hasn't burned yet. So we have the pictures that we want now. So if we go to drive tools in the uh, disk drive and go to manage. Go to manage, please. Thank you. You will see a finish burning option. Now, this is for Windows 10. Um, Windows 8 and down, uh, as far as I remember, has the burning button separately. 
so you can just automatically hit the burn button and not have to look for it. Uh, other instances you do have to look for the burn button. But you would hit that, it would burn it, and it would put the pictures or documents as data. Um, and what I mean by data is you can see it, you can use it if it's in a computer, but if you put music into it, it won't make it a music CD. It will still be just a file on the CD. To do that, you would need to use something like a shampoo or another thing, and that's the other way to put it on. So I don't want these right now. With a shampoo, any minute now, thank you. Um, same thing as can happen, you can use the music section to actually create a audio CD. So once you put it in something that, like your car's stereo or a Walkman or a computer or anything that can play CDs, it will automatically play the songs. But what we want is to just save pictures to it. So we want burn data and new disk. Update disk is only for rewritables. Um, which mine isn't. So we want new disk. And if you know where the pictures are, you can hit the add button. And just navigate to it. So like I know mine's going to be on desktop and then on shots. And then I can highlight these and hit add. And it will add it to the disk. You would then have to hit next down here and it will see yes you have a, C a CD or DVD or any of these here so there's CDs, CD-ROMs, CD rewritables, DVD-ROMs so on so forth and then you would just hit write CD and it will uh, put all the pictures that you put into it onto the CD and if it's a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM it cannot be undone. I'm not going to do that because I don't want these pictures on here. Um, but if you already have the files up you can also just oops. You can also just drag them and drop them into it. I already have them in there so it's not doing it. But that's pretty much how to do a put pictures or data or music onto a DVD or CD player. Any questions about that? Yeah? <laughs> My pictures are all under a folder that just says my pictures I don't even have to be on the web to open it oh yeah you don't have to be on the web to that they're on your uh, on your desktop or let me I'll, I'll show you where to navigate for them so underneath where does grandpa put everything and oh, there it is <laughs> um, for you it could be user your name or something but typically it's going to be a folder with a person on that folder and you would click that and underneath pictures or my pictures you can click that and your pictures will typically be saved in here unless you decide to save them somewhere else which is why we always say make sure if it's a picture, put it in the picture file. If it's the document, document file. It's easy to find it afterwards. Because um, we've had customers where they save things everywhere and we had to spend literally hours upon hours going through every single file and folder to see, oh, that's important. That shouldn't belong in here. 
that's important, before res resetting the computer. Um, and it's easier for you guys as well to find it afterwards. So again, you can just go over here, open up your DVD thing through Windows or a shampoo and drag it and drop the pictures into it. Can you also do that with Windows Media Player? Like if you put yeah. pictures in your, your folder and in your user and then you just call up Windows Media Player. I do not know if I have Media Player. Yeah. There it is. Um, blank disk. So you would go to the blank disk option and open the burn tab. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, it will just make an audio CD. So you can use this for music as well. Uh, we don't have any music files, I think, on here. Oh yeah, we do. So. I'll just, oops, I don't think I wanted to do that. Get all whatever this is. <laughs> bluegrass. <laughs> I'm allergic to bluegrass. Better than garbage you had on before. <laughs> hey, no one says anything bad about fur Elise. So, damn it, I just did it again. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to get to, okay, so if you find your mp3 file, you can right click it and open file location, what I wanted to do. And then you would just drag all these audio songs into this particular area right here. And it will add it and you can reorganize it. But Windows Media Player only does music. Uh, and you can have 80 minutes worth of it give or take. So that's putting up um, files into DVDs. Very short lesson. Thanks for the time. Uh, any... Now we can start the Q&A's, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then, unless... How did, you, how did you play the Google stuff? So... <laughs> like, good answer, good question. I can figure this one out. So, on Google, I, um, who uses Google as a search browser, uh, as for searching? Everyone? Um, on Google, they typically, on special occasions, special days, they have a special Google, um, Google Doodle, as they like to call it, of this particular day. For, for example, the day is that guy's name's birthday. He's Dutch. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, he made the mi microscope anyways. But they will have these duels um, for a special day. Some are games, some are just pictures. But typically in your address bar, in this top bar right here, you want to type in google.ca slash Doodles. With an S. And you will hit enter. And it will bring up all the past doodles Google had. Some are games, like I was playing a bit. Um, and there's ones for every single day. There's Mother's Day for Argentina. Because their day is different than Belarus's day. And you can just go through and look at them. You can even search for um, specific doodles in the search bar. So, like I searched in guitar, this time I spelt it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> so you can bring up guitar, and this was back in 2011. And you can just open it and strum your little hearts out, make music, you can record it, and it will play it back to you. Is there a piano one? Huh? Piano? Yeah, um, there used to be a piano one. I tried to find it. I can spell it. Well, 
I need to hit search. <laughs> Um, well, I know one of them you can play it, and I. Oh. Oh, this one shows you how the keyboard works. But, uh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, you, you could spend hours upon hours looking through all these old doodles. Um, some of my favorites were uh, way, way in the time, but they are archived at all. And you can just see, oh, what do they have for, you have to know the day, so. What? Okay, I'll look up Halloween. <laughs> yep, they have 2014. Um, yeah, they go all the way back to 1999 for Halloween. Which looked like that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can find any doodles like this is the 2014 one. Which that, yeah, I guess it is Halloween. There's an eyeball here. But um, you can search it, and some of them are quite fun and enjoyable. You don't lock them in, it defaults back to the today's one when you get yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah, like if I go back to Google. Yeah. Oh, that was Google Doodles, my bad. But if I went to Google, it would still be uh, the current one. Okay. And also, when these doodles do show up and you want to know more about it, you can click the doodle and they'll automatically search for that specific thing. So, for example, it's that name. <laughs> that guy. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. The only thing I can pronounce in there is Vaughn. Um, but you can learn, oh, he was born in Delft, and died in Delft, Netherlands. Um, you can see his age there, and how long he was married. And for Halloween, you can see, oh, why did Halloween become a thing? Why, you can search all that as well. Um, any... Other questions? On yep. the old ABG, like before we had Windows 10 and that, and before we had that, I used to always have, I used to always do a scan every week on it. You don't have to do that anymore, right, with Windows 10? Windows 10, um, it will, it, it, it sets a schedule for itself and typically it, it will just run. Yeah, it will just run in the background. You won't even know it's running. Maybe that's what's running. <laughs> yeah. Other than um, you can scan it if you want to, though. Yeah, but you can always scan it if you want yourself. Um, typically, if you go on on the web and search for things, yeah, might be a good habit to just scan after it. Um, and deleting history on on your computer. Well, that depends on what um, on web browser you have, because every web browser, ha it's it's the same function, but they're just in different locations. Now, that, there's a little arrow, that, not an arrow, half circle, that comes up on the very left-hand side, see what, on, your, on that page where it says apps with all the things. If I click on it, it will delete my history. But you don't have it up there. Um, like I said, it could. Uh, which web browser do you use? Google. Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer. Explorer. Here? 
No, it's probably this. Um, I'm just trying to find it myself. Yeah. So, if you do want to delete um, your history, uh, for Internet Explorer, there's a tool, a, a gear underneath the close button, and you would click that and go to Internet Options at the bottom. And then from here, brow Browsing History, you can just hit Delete or even delete browsing history on exit yeah. so when you close um, the program or shut off your computer it won't have any history on it because on, sorry, sorry, on anything financial like the banks and all that they tell you to delete um, your cache basically. yeah and I think that's the only way you can delete it is through Delete your history, right? Yeah. Um, if if you do it this way, um, it will get rid of temporary files, history, cookies, saved passwords, and web form information. However, if you do do this, um, for example, if you go to pogo.com and There's use. There's an easier way to than this. When your toolbar has history in it, um, menu bar, I don't, I'm not using the proper names here, but at the top, <laughs> at the top of your page, um, top of your Google page, no, at the very top of the page, like I have Firefox, then I have my bar at the top that says file. Oh, you use Firefox. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's why I can't find it while you're... There's a history button on the top. Yeah. 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 So if you click on that, uh, then it shows more options than what yeah. you just showed. Well, like I said, uh, web browsers do different things. <coughs> There's your history at the top, the very top. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you you can do it. It's it's the same function. Um. And then clear recent history. Yeah. And then your. But uh, I think the difference here is that will only get rid of the actual history. Like if I went to. It, get, it gets rid of more because you have more options. It'll do everything. Yeah, it will probably do everything. Um, they're all the same. You just have to find them. Like they all. Like how I explain it. Show up if you just click recent. No. Can pick a time frame too. I, I can't click it though. Oh, how come? Because I just started the session, so there's oh, no history. Yeah. Um. If I just do all that, I actually get something on that. Huh. <laughs> uh, go to Wikipedia. So now there should be, yeah. or not. Nah. Really doesn't like no, me. No, no, no. <laughs> no such thing as history is on here. I'm trying to get the history so I can actually show the history. We Let's go to YouTube. Open one of them. Let's go to back to Google. Let's look up apple pie. <laughs> Toot. Let's go here. I'm just trying to get a history going. <laughs> Don't you automatically have history as soon as you turn that computer on? Um, no, some computers do it. Um, they only have it for the session. I can't get the history to actually show up. Cause Is it only browsing on the tools, maybe? Yeah. For now, it's only browsing history. I think if I went to, did this for a good hour, I could probably get a history, but it wastes. But um, shows up every session, every time I go on my computer. That's probably, because this is the first time Firefox has even been opened on this computer. Oh, I see, okay. So I'm just trying to get yeah. the history going. Um, typically what history does, at least in this instance, is it notes what 
places you go to often. So if I went to Apple Pie uh, very often, it would have Apple Pie in my history. But I haven't done that enough. So it's saying there's no history. But essentially it's all the same thing. If you go here, um, you can delete the recent history. That's only for, it's, it, the, it only, websites only tell you this because, like, uh, bank information or whatnot. Um, because, just in case someone steals your computer, if they steal your computer and you have all your passwords saved on the web browser automatically, so when you go to, like, pogo.com for games, and you have it to automatically sign me in and have my information there, they can play with your pogo games. Or much worse if you have it for, um, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, what's that? Some of your pictures. I don't save them. <laughs> <laughs> I've got them all online now, Fred. <laughs> so, so now I'm confused because why would you have to eliminate your history if you deleted everything? Um, it's what you don't see that it deletes. Yeah. <laughs> what they say. There, there's. What they say. Every time you go to. Uh, every time you go to. Um, a. Every time you go to a website. Like, for example, RBC Online Banking. It knows you like you would like the web page in English. This is your password. This is your bank information. So on and so forth. That's all in my history. My and it, password. And it makes it a cookie. I know that sounds delicious, but it's, a step. it's, a step. it's essentially loads things faster. So if if you delete your cookies and your web histories and whatnot. I was saying before, Jim, every time I go into the banking, I get rid of the history and the uh, cookies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The they, every time. You yeah. Your that, it's a good you habit. Your history after you've done online banking? It's I a, don't do online banking. Well, I do online banking. It's, yeah, it's a good um, thing to get into. <clears throat> do online banking. It, it, it is a good habit to get into because... Um, Again, it depends on what web, bra uh, web browser you have. For here, it's go to history, and you so can. Anybody can come in on my computer, go to history, and get my password. No, the the what it shows in show all his in this history, like it shows you where you've been. The actual cookies and whatnot are hidden. Um, you can't see them. If, unless you go actually looking for them. It just shows me that I've been to the, the Royal Yeah, Bank. it just shows, oh, this is but your bank. Yeah. It says, oh, you've been to the Royal Bank of Canada. I think that's what RBC stands mm -hmm. for. And so now, now if someone did steal the, your laptop or whatever, they could be like, oh, now I just have to search for the cookies and see which cookies belong to RBC. I can get your uh, password, your... And they can get my cookies off of my computer. Yeah, your cookies are saved onto the computer. And what cookies do is essentially they make web searching faster and easier for you. For example, again, for RBC, they know instead of it have, having to ask you every time you go in, would you like this in English? Do you live in Canada? And so on and so forth. It skips that step because it brings it from your computer. It's like, oh, I know all this. I, I get rid of my cookies every time and it never asks me no question. Never. How do you get rid of cookies? Yeah, how do you do that? On that history. You view, view files, it says. And then you click on view files and then you click on delete. I like them all and delete them. Uh, it gives you, I think, five or six. Yeah, you gotta delete those cookies. 
Yeah, th this is why. This is why. Uh, uh, this is why um, Firefox isn't actually saving history for me. Uh, it's marked down as never remember history. I would have been at this for hours and not got anything. Um, Why don't we all just do that and never remember history? Um, then nobody can come in and steal. Why you still got your cookies on? Yeah, the, there's two kinds of files they make. There's tempor temporary files and cookies, which are also temporary files. Um, you would have to go through the computer and actually go to the file location to delete them. Um, Typically, uh, I wouldn't fully recommend that unless you kn know what you're doing. Because if you delete something, not a temporary file or a cookie, you will be in big trouble. Because your computer will then be a brick. Can I interrupt? So if I find cookies on my final, which probably never will, but you know, no, and click on something that's got my bank <coughs> name in it, it will open my bank account? No. No, then why bother? <laughs> um, if it's not, if somebody takes my computer and finds it, no, it doesn't it won't, open. It won't open straight to it, but they will have programs that allow it to view what's inside of it. They'll get very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it will, the, these things, like, I could probably find your passwords. If you give me your computer, I could probably find your passwords for anything you've typed in. And yeah, I go to that program that says, and it says my passwords are 600 years strong. After 600 years, I might not care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care yeah. all this. But that's for, that's for guessing. If they actually have your password, it's not 600 years worth anymore. <laughs> but um, okay. Here's a good example. Tell us again how to delete cookies. <laughs> I don't actually know how to delete cookies. Yeah, because I don't even know if I have cookies. You, you probably will. The, be the best way to do it is what my grandpa, uh, what my great grandpa does, is when he goes on to, um, if you go to a place that has a username and a password, the computer will always ask, do you want me to save, to save this? password and username for whatever for RBC or whatever if you hit yes it will make that temporary file and it will put that password into your computer so when you turn on your web browser again and go to RBC it will pull it from your computer and slap it onto where it needs to be so you can just hit enter if you hit no you will have to type it in again and it won't save any of the, your, your passwords <clears throat> That's typically the best way to go. Never save your passwords. Have them written down somewhere. Or um, make sure don't write down a password and then put it in your wallet or put it somewhere. Think don't write it down or don't make a password and then think oh I'll remember it. You do want to keep keep a log of your passwords but don't make them easy to reach also don't make it a document and put it on your computer <laughs> it just defeats the whole purpose but keep it in a paper remind yourself every every time go into the habit of typing it in instead of having it saved and you will remember the password and you can then just shred that piece of paper and burn it um, that's all we have time for it's two o'clock. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your questions perfectly. Uh, so next week uh, I will have to learn uh, learn how those things go that way. Um, yeah. And I think there was another question I didn't answer fully. Like, 
That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.